Well, the government aims to uh, get rid of uh, pit toilets at schools by 2030. President Cyril Ramaphosa has urged the private sector to join government in this initiative. It's aimed at preventing further child deaths and improving hygiene at schools. Well, for more on this, we're joined in the studio by co-head of research at Equal Education, Hopolang Selebalo. Thank you so very much for joining us in, at Afro Breakfast. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, as a start, Equal Education uh, has come out saying that uh, uh, the President's hashtag safe initiative is ironic. What do you mean by this? We'd say ironic and disingenuous. Um, I mean, we, we would definitely, we are glad for this intervention or this initiative, but it goes counter to the fact that the Department of Basic Education is appealing a court judgment that was handed down in Bisho uh, mid-July that basically spoke, that spoke to improving uh, a law called the norms and standards for school infrastructure. Mm. Um, currently, um, as, as, as the norms stand, uh, they, they, they are, elements of them are quite vague, elements of uh, the provisions in the norms, and the Bisho High, High Court uh, ruled that the, the norms need to be strengthened, but the department and uh, provincial MECs are appealing this, this judgment. So if uh, the department then basically absolves itself from responsibility, but then uh, is part of ruling out this initiative, uh, this safe initiative, mm. it doesn't it doesn't balance. Are you saying that the department is, is not actually interested in adhering to uh, the norms and standards? And, 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 and what are these norms and standards? Perhaps just let us and the viewers just know of what are these norms and standards, these basic what children in schools are supposed to actually mm -hmm. have in the schools that should be norms and standards? Of course. Uh, the norms and standards set out the requirements of what schools should look like. Yeah. They set out very clear timeframes of when each of these deliverables should be completed. So it was with regard to access to adequate sanitation, for example, the department and, and, the, and the, the provinces were supposed to have completed the, this, jo this, this work, these jobs, uh, by the 29th of November 2016. Uh, that it included the provision of adequate sanitation, electricity, and water. But this deadline has come and gone, and we're still dealing with schools without sanitation, mm. and in many cases, uh, uh, learners and teachers using pit latrines. And just to say that norms also explicitly ban pit latrines. Mm -mm. Right. So I'm struggling then to understand what uh, the problem uh, you have as equal education. Surely in principle, uh, one would say, you know, it's better late than never. Mm -hmm. And it does seem that something then is being done. I mean, yes, there have been uh, consistent calls, as you rightly say, for, for better infrastructure at schools. And uh, of course, that eradication of uh, put toilets for a number of years. Uh, so here we go. We finally have uh, the president yesterday announcing, along with the basic education uh, uh, minister that we're trying to do this and we're going to eradicate these pit toilets. So how do you justify the, these criticisms that you're having towards, well, not only the president, but uh, the basic uh, education department? Uh, like I said when I started, we definitely, we, we commend the, the SAFE initiative, but again, we ask how it takes place in a context where the department is, is appealing um, uh, a judgment that basically laid out how they, when and how they should do their job. Mm -hmm. That base, that puts the responsibility. What is their the appeal based on? I suppose you're up to date with uh, of course. The, the court process. What what is the the main, uh, the main features of this appeal that they're putting forward? We we uh, took uh, a number of issues um, in the norms and standards uh, to the court. Uh, the ones that are I would like to highlight now include what we call the escape clause yeah. uh, in the norms and standards that basically basically says that the department basically said in the norms and standards that if Treasury doesn't provide funding or if uh, other government entities such as ESCOM don't come to the party with the provision of electricity, for example, yeah. then they are not required to meet the deadline. Um, another part of the of, of um, that was problematic in the norms and standards was around the provision of plans and reports. <laughs> Funnily enough, the president asked for an audit. So uh, provincial departments are supposed to put out annually uh, plans, implementation plans, and reports. Mm -hmm. uh, s submit them to the minister. Mm -hmm. 
And we have struggled to get these reports. They're not publicly available. We've had to hire for them. In, uh, uh, when we recently hired for these reports, only eight of the nine provinces provided, uh, provided the reports. The Eastern Cape has not mm. put out these reports. Mm. So the, the court said the first part, the escape clause, is unconstitutional, that the department must meet those deadlines, must they bear the responsibility of providing um, school infrastructure. Secondly, the department must make those reports publicly available and accessible timelessly. Yeah. Um, so we just find it contradictory that you now have a safe initiative that minis the minister says um, uh, was, was compelled by the death uh, uh, of Lumkam Ketwa and the president's instruction. Mm. But we have a young child that died in 2004, in uh, 2014, Michael Gomabe. Yes. And the sense that she didn't feel the urgency then, that mm. this was a major challenge that we're facing. Well, one of the questions I have for, for Equal uh, Education as an organization is instead of taking a, a government uh, to court and having these court processes and more money being spent on court, uh, on court processes, which of course is, is an expensive uh, process altogether, why are you not working hand in hand with uh, a government to try and have, as your name suggests, equal well, education? education. Before we went uh, to court in this round, in terms of uh, fixing uh, the, the regulations, we had tried for two years to engage with the minister, and she was not willing to entertain those, those conversations. We wrote to the president after the judgment. Um, we wrote to the, to, the, to the presidency and to the minister as well to say, uh, this is the court judgment. We hope you abide by it. We too would like to move forward. We need to get to start, start the business of fixing schools. And we hope you don't appeal this, this matter. Mm. And here we are. Are you still, I know in March uh, this year, you'd called for an out and out dismissal of uh, the Basic Education Minister, Angie Matsecha, and you're saying you wanted to work with her, but you're also asking for her dismissal at the same time, which I find is a bit, a bit strange. Is it still uh, your assertion, uh, your contention that, that, that she should go? And, 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 and what are your reasons then for saying that? And I, I suppose it would be difficult to then work with someone that you feel should be dismissed in the first place. We just want the minister to do her job. That's all we want. And if she can't do her job, well, then it is what it is. <laughs> All right. Dupolang uh, Sulebelo, thank you very much uh, for joining us here on uh, Afro Breakfast. That's the co head of research for equal education, Dupolang Sulebelo. We appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. you very much.